I applied to med school in 2018, and back in my day, going straight through was the dream. That was the gold standard. But by 2023, 73% of med students were older than 23, which meant they took at least one gap year. Is med school impossible to get into without taking time off? Are this generation's pre-meds procrastinating, burnt out, or just taking the time to find themselves? Today, I'm breaking down what's really going on, why gap years are more common, why they're terrible ideas, why they're terrific ideas, and how to know whether or not it's right for you. Why are gap years more common? There are three reasons gap years are more common. One, we're done with the 70s. The year is 1970. To become a doctor, you needed a good GPA, a strong MCAT, and a firm handshake. Truthfully, you could probably get away with just having two of the three. Today, the average matriculant has a 3.86 GPA and a 512 MCAT. And even if you have near perfect stats, greater than a 3.8 GPA and a greater than 517 MCAT score, one in six of those students get in nowhere. The academic bar is higher, so if you started slow and still want to become a doctor, you'll need some time to fix your stats. Two, doctor and. Today, modern physicians don't just practice medicine in a clinic. They run for office. They're consultants for legal and pharmaceutical companies. They have hospital administrative responsibilities. They do research and they're spokespeople for their communities. The AAMC reports that med school matriculants have an average of 709 hours of community service. Throw in the research, the clinical experience, and the grades, and there's just not enough hours in the day to complete without taking extra time off. And number three, the three M's. The final reason more med students are taking gap years? Well, take it from the Dean of Admissions at Emory. Dr. Ira Schwartz shares, here at Emory, we're very pleased to see people take one, three, four gap years. And many ad comps share that they can actually tell who took a gap year and who did not. How? Well, specifically, they're looking at what gap years bring. Crucial personal development, an opportunity to ensure that you really want to become a doctor, and the three most important things ad comps look for. We'll call them the three M's. Maturity, maturity, and maturity. Building resilience and these soft skills like empathy, cultural competency, you know, all the things that we learned over the last 40 years make great doctors. All of that takes time to develop. You aren't born medical school ready. You become this person through the lived experiences that you reflect on and learn from. And there's no way you can rush that growth. Now, so long as you're mature and your application is mature, you'll be competitive no matter how old you are. And if you want to see what mature applications look like, we have eight full AMCAS applications that earned acceptances to the best medical schools in the country. Over 16,100 pre-meds are part of our community. To join, click the application database link in our description box below now. Why gap years are terrible. There are four main reasons pre-meds are against gap years. Number one, dollar, dollar bills. The average physician earns anywhere from 240,000 to 650,000. And while that seems like a lot to miss out on, especially compounded over 30 years, especially considering medical school debt burden, the truth is somewhere in the gray, and it's quite more nuanced than you think. I did a whole video on medical school debt here, and long story short, it probably does matter if you are a specific physician living in a specific high cost of living state. Otherwise, it probably matters much less than you think. Number two, can you do it again? My father always told me that once I make my first dollar and pay my first bill, I'll have put on the golden handcuffs. Money makes it very hard to go back to school. You've been a professional student your entire life, but once you transition out and work full time for a year or two, do you think you can go back to the classroom just as easy as it once was? And more importantly, will you want to? You'll leave that nine to five job that pays for your nice vacations and your nice dinners, and you'll trade it to be a student again from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m., paying hundreds of thousands of dollars and being at the bottom of the totem pole back at the hospital. Now, while research suggests that most gap year students have no issue returning back to the classroom, data applies to populations, not specific people. So only you'll know exactly how you'll respond to the time off. Number three, FOMO. The funny thing about the human mind is that it picks and chooses what it remembers. Even if most pre-meds you know take gap year, you'll focus on those who don't. And that small group may make you feel behind as they advance their careers without you. 
Personally, I think we all run our own races and making decisions based on others' journeys is a bad, bad idea. But that social and psychological risk is real. And I don't want to ignore how influential that can be for a young 21 year old junior. Number four, nothing in life. Just because you took a gap year doesn't mean anything has changed. You might have wanted to earn 2000 clinical hours as a scribe in three publications, but it turns out your research stalls and you figured that you hate working in the emergency department. Now you're actually questioning whether you belong in medicine and your application is really no more competitive than it was last year. Woof, nothing in life is guaranteed. And that is also true for a gap year improving your chances at getting into medical school. Don't be fooled, gap years are not for everyone. And just because they are more common doesn't mean they're the right decision for you. Now for most people, including me, who didn't take a gap year, taking time off is the right answer. And later we're going to talk about how to know which decision is right for you. And if you're applying to medical school in the coming year or two, the gap year is one of many critical decisions you must make and you can't afford to make mistakes. We're very proud that our pre-med Catalyst students, the ones that have submitted their applications on time, have a 100% acceptance rate. That's more than double the national average. And our results are because we work so closely with students. In fact, we can only take on four students per month until we're full. If you'd be interested in getting into some of the strongest programs in the country, click the application cycle advising link to book a free strategy call before we're full for the cycle. Why gap years are fantastic. Earlier, I told you that many adcoms can tell whether or not a student has taken a gap year. And they're not alone. Med students can also tell. In fact, my partner is a med student and the recurring theme between her and her classmates, they all hate no gap year students. And even once you graduate med school, residents can tell too. I once worked in an ICU floor where I had two other teammates. Mark took multiple gap years. He worked as an EMT and supported his parents' blue collar business where they laid literal asphalt. Janet, she went straight through and she was a professional student all her life. Mark worked in teams the day he was born. And in the ICU, every task he hopped on to help with. No task, including picking up trash off the operating room floor was beneath him. Having Mark around made care better and life easier for everyone on the team. Janet, she disappeared for hours at a time. And any task, even if it were for her own patients, she passive aggressively complained about. And this is the crux of gap years. The idea is that it takes time to develop real life skills. Skills to understand how to work with other people. Skills on how to lead with class and character. Skills necessary to be accountable to a job with bosses above you and trainees below you. And you don't build that normally if all you're doing is spending time working through organic chemistry problem sets. And that brings us to reason number one of three as to why gap years are fantastic. Maturity, maturity, and maturity. Real world exposure gives you time to understand life outside the classroom. And that becomes apparent in the work environment. Two, at your leisure. If you don't take a gap year, you're taking the MCAT the summer after your sophomore year. You're pushing for 2000 clinical hours, 900 community service hours, and 500 research hours. All while trying to get a 4.0 through 21 units for three years straight. When you take time off, suddenly your shoulders relax and you get to space all of that out. You don't have to sprint from this commitment to that commitment to that commitment, straight to bed, straight to waking up to the next commitment. You can slow down and have the time to appreciate your golden college years. And three, intentional 2000. There are a few pre-med things you cannot accomplish with an intentional 2000 hours. That's working full time for an entire gap year. So if you wanna double down on your theme of supporting homeless populations, in 2000 hours, you can lead a mobile clinic. You can partner with the Department of Public Health to distribute Narcan and HIV self-testing kits. You can publish two to three papers in infectious disease. And in those same 2000 hours, you can also cover up your red flags. If you're short on shadowing or if your GPA is a touch lower than where you'd like it, a strategic gap year erases all those concerns. The greatest key to making a gap year successful is to ensure that it is intentional. It is proactive. It is the decision you made. On the flip side, if you want to guarantee your gap year is useless, then make sure that it's reactive. Show up on day one not knowing anything that you're planning to do for the coming year and just hope that you will figure it out. How to know if you should take a gap year. When I was a sophomore in college, I wanted to take a gap year. And while I didn't, truthfully to this day, I wish I had. 
there's small life things like when I put the wrong dish soap in the dishwasher and flooded the entire apartment. Or because I never had a real job, I felt like a serious idiot when I had to figure out disability insurance and retirement planning and all these grown up big boy adult money things. And perhaps most spiritually and emotionally, I never really had time to see the world. But there were things that made me ready to not take a gap year. I played basketball my entire life. And that team sport taught me everything about showing up for other people. I grew up to two fantastic parents who own a small business selling clothing. And working in my parents' shop since I was a kid taught me routine, accountability, and how to own your responsibilities. These lived experiences on top of a competitive application I worked hard to build gave me the option of not taking a gap year. You also should not take a gap year if you fulfill these three criteria. One, your application is ready. It matches the competitiveness you see in the real applications we have in our application database. Two, you are ready. You have the lived experiences and are mature enough to study all day, study all night, re-enter a hospital where now you're back at the bottom of the totem pole. You're okay with doing whatever it takes to get the job done. Three, you know what you're getting yourself into. This is a seven to 12 year commitment before you see the light at the end of the tunnel. If you have anything else you're considering, I'd highly recommend checking that out before you lock up the rest of your 20s and 30s. Medical school will always be here waiting whenever you're ready. Now, if you don't fulfill any of these criteria, you know that you should take a gap year and you know exactly why. This is extremely important because now you know exactly how to spend that gap year. This turns a gap year from a detour that's forced upon you because you weren't competitive and you weren't ready to a strategic investment into your own future. Ultimately, I want the decision to be yours. The worst outcome is for med schools to force you to take a gap year because you realize you're not competitive. Medicine will take hundreds of thousands of dollars from you and it'll take a decade of your life. So at the very least, I don't want them taking away your agency and your ability to make this decision. If you like this video, you'll love this one here about the 10 brutal truths I wish I knew when I started my freshman pre-med journey 10 years ago. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.